potato grip. My dad! On the internet, you can find just about anything. Anything. One thing you can find right here on YouTube is a lot of horror. And no, I'm not referring to this. Biting commentary. Crypt TV. Chilling tales for dark nights. Alter. And thanks to some incredibly talented people all over the world, we now have access to some real home-baked horror. Mm. I'm Biscuits! Analog horror, one of, if not the most, accessible forms of horror on the internet right now. We have been treated to some incredible and some less than incredible horror medias since its origins in the early 2010s. Ooh, a rocking chair in a dimly lit room. I wonder what could happen. Get it? But what makes something like this? Scary. And then for a little bit of fun at the end of the video, we'll make our own analog horror. It is Halloween after all, if I got this video finished in time. So what makes them good? What makes them not so good? Well, let's plug in our old VHS players and have a look, shall we? There's a tape in there. Analog horror, as the name implies, is horror media that's created utilizing low fidelity graphics and analog media. But what is analog media? VHS, landline, radio, telegraph, vinyl, broadcast, telefax, photograph, transmitter, television, tape recorder, video, newspaper, magazine, traffic time, butter free, catch them, catch them, catch them, catch them. All of which lends itself really well to giving the media itself a more believable archival and historical look, while simultaneously just looking weird. <laughs> analog horror is oftentimes called a spin-off media to found footage, and when you look at the comparisons, you can see why. Found footage is also low fidelity, usually. Immersive, grounded, and also lower res, usually. usually. With the more famous of them being something like The Blair Witch Project, or Wreck, or Paranormal Activity. More relevant to YouTube, though, you have the likes of No Through Road, which we are going to come back to. Let's just put a pin in that out. Something grounded goes a very long way in lending itself to the believability of a story and its medium. It's why things like the Chernobyl Diaries and the Blair Witch Remake and Quarantine just don't really work as well. They look way too good. There is something genuinely unsettling about old media and analog media. Do you remember PSAs? from when you were a kid. Analog horror can be incredibly immersive, not just for the media itself, but the story that it's telling. Local 58 is a series by Chris Strobe, who famously wrote The Candle Cove Creepypasta. It's all about a local TV station in Mason County, which is constantly hacked and interrupted with otherworldly and just kind of just, just, just things happen, weird. <laughs> the Mandela Catalog by Alex Kister is all about an invasion of doppelgangers in the fictitious county of Mandela in Wisconsin. The first tape being a sort of PSA from a governing body. But the tape itself is littered with unsettling images and also messages that wouldn't be found in a normal governmental PSA, so... Can you really trust this narrator? The Walton Files, Marble Hornets, Kane Pixel's Backrooms, Pets Cop even. Each of these worlds is a story told in a multitude of ways with multiple different entries, all of which drip feed elements of the world that they are talking about. Stories are awesome to immerse yourself in, but why? Do they scare us? When I watch something like this appear in FNAF Plus, why does it frighten me? There is actually a science behind why things like this frightens us that the creators either know of or unintentionally lean into. This is the human brain. Inside this part of the brain, which is the inferior temporal cortex associated with object recognition, there is something called the fusiform face area and specializes in facial recognition. So when we see something that looks like a face that doesn't quite fit the FFA mold, things get a little wonky. Horror always exploits this primal function of our brains and analog horror is no exception. Mixed with a decent story, sound design and visuals and this can be enough. One of analog horror's biggest and best tools 
is the unknown or the ambiguous. The bigger picture. Let me just take that pin out because we're coming back to No Through Road. Why do these boys get stuck in a loop? Who is this that is after them? Is this somebody else stuck in the loop? How were the bodies found if they're stuck in a weird time loop? These are all questions that we can ask and explore alongside the characters because we don't know because they don't know. And unlike some analog horrors, the answer is not obvious. I'm gonna rip the piss out of Urban Spook. <laughs> it's that level of intrigue that gets you invested in this world's story. You want to know more, but when these stories are full of unreliable narrators, who can you trust? Well, gee whiz, mister, that sounds real cool, but is there an analog horror for me? Oh, yeah, for sure. Man Man? Yes. South Park? Yes. SpongeBob? Yes. Sir Pillow? Yes. So what doesn't really work so great in Analog Horror? Well, you can kind of find out most of the answers in the plethora of Analog Horror in a nutshell videos you can find right here on YouTube. Some of these things might be a little bit divisive, but hey, if you want to talk about them, then let's talk about them in the comments together. I am well up for a lot of healthy discussion about these kind of things because horror at light comedy is incredibly subjective and I'm not going to attack you because I'm not the creator of Urban Spook. Text to speech. Personally, I think there's a place to use text to speech speech and there's a place not to use it, but in more cases than there isn't, it really breaks the immersion of an analog horror. If you're really trying to get invested in a world, how quick can you break immersion when you start hearing Microsoft Sam? Ashwood County and neighboring counties. We have received alerts about a spooky baby swas swas. Big ol' long boy, stretchy faces. Spooky faces and spooky creatures show up a whole bunch in Analog Horror, and that's fine. But in my opinion, you have to use them with the rule of sparsity that we introduced, remember in that last video? Too much of a good thing ruins it. If most of your videos all just culminate with, and then there was a spooky face, Maybe try something a little different. For a pretty good example, you can look at, again, the Mandela catalog and its use of the Archangel Gabriel. Stack is really cool and you should like and subscribe. Oh wow, Gabriel, thank you. Yes, you should. <laughs> Shock for the sake of it. Overindulgent and on the nose writing. Predictable jump scares, all with the same buildup. And a real lack of subtlety. Listen, in Local 58, there's an episode called Contingency. The story goes that America has lost some war against some enemy, which is left ambiguous, and the only thing left to do is the government to ask you to take America with you. Absolutely, brother, how are we going to stick it to these gosh dang invader man? Take your family onto the front lawn, lay in the victory pose, and then sh America, oh yeah. YouTube really hates it when you say, say the S word. This whole short plays out that you have to show yourself and your family the rabbits. And if you don't, don't worry, the police will do it for you. And with the chilling message, this message will repeat until there are none left to read it. That idea is terrifying enough before it immediately cuts to a correction slate that says, <laughs> wait, April Fools, um, that was a hoax. Don't worry about it. Everything's fine. Sorry for the confusion. And then the video ends. <laughs> and we don't see the aftermath. We don't see anybody who's blown themselves away. We are just left in the headspace of somebody who may have just had to do that to their family. Or a little bit like, you know, the guy at the end of the mist. <laughs> we are left to ponder. And that just shows us that sometimes ambiguity is better than reveal. So if we can kind of figure out what works and why it works, what can we make? What can we contribute to the genre? Well, I've given it a go. In our last videos, we talked about horror films. I don't have the money to make a high budget horror film. In another video, we talked about video games. I don't have money to make a video game, but what I can do is create a story. So here is me trying my hand at analog horror. Morning from Andrew Mitz, 7 o'clock on Thursday, the 24th of November. The head. We are terribly sorry, but the BBC must interrupt this program to bring you breaking news from the British Department of Information. Please stand by. Good 
morning, good afternoon, or good evening from wherever you are. This is your British Department of Information. It is at this time that we must ask you to lock your door. Check your windows. Now, sit and pay attention. In the pictured areas, we have received thousands of reports of a phenomenon we are officially going to coin, copies. Across the affected areas and growing further areas, we have seen people much like you or me leaving nearby woodlands and finding their way home. These people have no memory of how they arrived in these woodlands, but know how to get home and have full recollection of life before their foray into the woods. These people are not as they seem, in fact. These people are far more alike to you than you may think. They are you. For reasons we do not yet fully know, understand these copies have your personality, your memories, and indeed, have your looks. Everything down to the memories you cherish and the secrets you keep. From our current understanding, they too do not understand that they are a copy. Observe this investigative tape of a copy in custody. Peace. Fascinating though these creatures may be, they are more dangerous than they may first appear. If left alone with their counterpart, the cop- Consequences. How can you keep your loved ones safe? Well, it is simple, dear citizen. Break it down to the fast five. If your copy appears at your home, do not fear and do not engage. Call the local authority and await arrival. Get safe and take cover. Your copy may not go quietly into custody. Wait for silence. Keeping your friends and family safe may come at a cost. Monitor your friends and family and look for the telltale signs that they are not who they say they are. No wear or tear, no scars, cuts or blemishes. If you know your friends and families have cuts or scars you can exploit for safety reasons, you must report them to your local authority and they will be dealt with peacefully. This has been your British Department of Information. Look alive, stay alive, and have a fantastic day.